Hi, and welcome to the program. Tonight, we'll be looking at the craft of acting and training in acting. And for that purpose, we have on the program somebody who knows a lot more about that than I do. We have Ted Kazanoff. Ted, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Oh, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. uh, Ted, uh, before we talk about the craft of acting, let's, uh, let's hear a little bit more about you so uh, the folks at <laughs> home can uh, know a little bit about who's talking to them. OK. It all goes back to um, the years just immediately after World War II. <laughs> See, I, <clears throat> they let me go out of the Army, and I came back to New York and started studying acting in earnest. <clears throat> it was a heady time, I have to say that. There was a certain kind of hope that filled the air, you know. And acting was going through a kind of transformation. He didn't start with emotion. He really started with a factor of will. It, it was part of the way the, the country was, the, the forward-looking nature of things. You could control, in a sense, life. You could put your energies to work and, and accomplish things. But the real, the, the basic part of the training, the process part of the training, had much more to do with um, finding ways of releasing the self, of making you as instrument far more open and vulnerable. And a lot of the emphasis was on that kind of training. But the notion of physical action was there, but it sort of receded into the background. And so you had a much more kind of subjective approach to okay. things. OK, well, that, uh, there are a lot of words in there, uh, uh, phys uh, the physical action versus the, uh, the objective. And where Not versus, it is, uh, yeah. OK. Uh, <laughs> um, where did you, um, who did you, uh, how did you get started in acting? Who did you train with? Well, I actually it started um, in PS 91 in the Bronx, New York. And I had a homeroom teacher who had an autistic kid that um, lived in a, in a home on, Conco on the concourse, which is one of the big drags in the Bronx. And she decided one day she wanted to do a program for the kids. So we, uh, we she dramatized uh, Tom Sawyer, and I played the ghost in that, <laughs> you know, in the traditional white sheet, you know, and coming out, you know, scaring the hell out of the kids. And in those days, I knew very little about what I was doing, but I loved the kids, and I would look out in the audience to say, my God, you had a sense of absolute awe. Not at me, but at the fact of being in the theater. And it was then that I realized the power of this medium. So it's got, you know, its, got it, its hooks in you. It got its hooks into me. Sure. Yes. And then I began to think, well, you know, if you want to do something in it, I guess you have to do, you know, get some training, which I proceeded to do, but mainly after, after the war. Right. Uh, and where did you train? Well, with Paul Mann, with Joe Anthony. He was all part of the American Theater Wing. I had studied with Hallie Flanagan Davis at uh, Smith College, and she was a remarkable woman. Uh, you know a little bit about her if you saw Cradle Will, Will Rock, the, uh, the movie. No, didn't see. No, well, she, she headed up federal theater. And uh, it was a, she was kind of an inspiring woman. She was not a craft person as such. You know, but uh, she knew a lot about theater, and she knew more about life. And she gave you a sense of, of what's possible. You know, and she, uh, <clears throat> I think, in, inspired me in many, many, many ways. Fantastic. Then when I wound up you know, getting specific training. Now the, you, you also went on to, uh, after, uh, after you trained, you've, uh, you've been a college professor and... Uh, yes, I have. Yes. I was a college professor. <clears throat> Where have you done that? Well, all over the country. You name the state and I've probably been there. <laughs> 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 but in oh, California, right. uh, uh -huh. um, New York, Massachusetts, uh, New England, various states in New England. Uh -huh. I almost went south, but my wife said no. So we now, here go. in the Boston area, I know you taught at BU. Taught at BU. Brandeis. I did Brandeis. That was my last stop on the line. Uh -huh. And I retired uh, some 14, 15 years ago. Okay. Wonderful. And you've also, uh, you've also had a chance to uh, act with some, some fairly famous people. And, and, well, uh, yeah. I mean, I have more. Productions. So, yeah. what, would you, what would you highlight there? 
well, roles that I, I played Diane Anthony, I remember, and that was at Smith College. And um, there was something about that role that uh, uh, unleashed me in so many different ways. And I found all kinds of business that I thought really suited what was going on. And I remember Halley coming back afterward and said, you want me to get you an agent in New York? And I said, no, I like what I'm doing. And I love the kids. So New York was a place we visited. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, uh, many other roles. That, that sticks out because it was the first time I really felt that I, uh, 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 there was so much of me involved in that. You know, um, other more recent things. Uh, oh, I liked what I did in the, in the mystery. Um, based on the early uh, medieval mystery plays, I would, uh, Shakespeare and Company uh, and, uh, produced it, and I did uh, the Abraham and Isaac sequence. Of course, I played Abraham, <laughs> not even the goat. <laughs> and there you had, uh, uh, the, what made that interesting is that you had to compress so much into that to get a sense of the, 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 how, how uh, difficult it was for uh, me as Abraham to comprehend what God was doing and, uh, and how that just turned him inside out and had to call for ma uh, uh, magnified adjustments, you know, which uh, I think I got. Not opening night, I have to admit, <laughs> I killed opening night, but otherwise it was fine. <laughs> opening night, you're, you're always I'm not, very I'm, I'm not an opening night guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think very many people are, are no, they? No, I don't know. No. Some uh, people thrive. Uh, so, it, in order to transition to uh, to talking about acting, teaching, uh, are there any words you might use to describe your your style or your influences? I mean, obviously, it's based on on how you trained, yeah. which was um, at the uh, well. The one the thing that studio. I think is extremely important, outside of the vulnerability of the actor in this, is the factor of resistance. I mean, the never um, grab too quickly at what you think is there. You really have to let the object lead you. And, 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 and in, a, in a way, that's a kind of struggle with the thing. Not that you struggle with the object, but you're trying in a way to, to, to interact with it in such a way that so much of you comes through in this. And that takes a certain amount of time. Yes. You know, and actors have a tendency not to feel that they have all the time in the world. Particularly young actors, I won't talk about them. Sure. People in this room. Well, we, uh, we're going to, uh, obviously we'll find out more about uh, uh, the, the terminology you use yeah. as we watch you coach some actors. Sure. Now, I've decided to, as a way of introducing people to your coaching, to show a tape uh, that we shot uh, some days ago at the Boston Playwrights Theater okay. with uh, actress June Lewin, yeah. uh, who is uh, doing a scene from Coriolanus. Mm -hmm. uh, can you describe? She's, no. she's let, the let, let, she's let, the let, mother let of see. she's the mother she's of Coriolanus. Of I just want to make that clear for okay. for the yeah. for the people what what it is at home, and and we can roll that tape at any any time. Near the end of the play, she's Coriolanus' mother, and he's he's um, been exiled from Rome. Good morning, and uh, taken up with the the uh, attackers, and is now coming going against Rome, and she's pretty mad. She she doesn't want him to. Well, no, no. He's really going to mess things up if he does that. So she has come here with his wife and his little kitties and oh, all the supporters to beg him not to do this boring thing. Thou knowest, great son, the end of war is uncertain. But this certain, that if thou conquer Rome, the benefits which thou shalt thereby reap is such a name whose repetition will be dogged with curses, whose chronicle thus writ, the man was noble, but with his last attempt he wiped it out, destroyed his country, 
and his name remains to the ensuing age abhorred. Speak to me, son. Thou hast affected the fine strains of honor to imitate the graces of the gods, to tear with thunder the wide cheeks of the air, and yet to charge thy sulfur with a bolt that should be that, uh, that should but rive an oak. Why dost not speak? Thinks thou it honorable for a noble man still to remember wrongs? There is no man in the world more bound to his mother, yet here he lets me prate like one in the stocks. Thou hast never in thy life showed thy dear mother any courtesy, okay. etc. Sit up. So, uh, it gets a little rhetorical, no? Yeah, it does. Okay. In very simple terms, if, if, if it were your son, yeah, what I would you do? That's what I, huh? <laughs> it's up here, I know. <laughs> I've, been, I've been trying to approach it that way. If it were my son, okay. And he had done something that uh, uh, you know, was bad for you, bad for the country, bad for him. Why do you think he does it? Well, he's suffering from an excess of pride. Uh -huh. He's been uh, a bad boy. He's been, and he's been exiled, and he thinks that, you know, it's not his fault, and uh, they've done him wrong, so he's feeling vengeful. He, he, vengeful? Yes. You can uh, understand this. I can understand it, but... But? What do you mean? But, the but? but the, the ramifications are going to be so enormous. Yes, but, it, but the first thing you'd want to get at would be the, the more direct familial relationship, yes. wouldn't you? Right. Rather than... Yes, and very soon after this, I, I and his wife and children, I say, we're, we get down on our knees and beg him not to do it. And the whole thing is predicated on the fact that, you know, this is his so, family. There, there he is. Right from there, do it again. Thou knows, great no, son. Because, have you, is this the first time you've talked to him? I think it probably, it, well, this is not the beginning of the, the speech, but this, I think. So what, what's, what's transpired in that early part of it? He's been off soldiering all over the place and being a great man, and I have not had a chance to talk to him one on one. <coughs> this is, we're doing it in public, but we have, I've had no other opportunity to um, approach him. But if you understand that it, it comes from a hurt pride, somebody who thought he had done great things and has been dishonored. Who has, in fact, done great things. Okay, well, just then talk to him uh, like uh, I understand where this comes from. Listen to me. Well, why are you argumentative? Because he's sitting there <coughs> ignoring you, standing there. Because he knows what you're here for. Thou knowest, great son. The end of war is uncertain. But this certain. That if thou conquer Rome, the benefit which thou shalt thereby reap. Doesn't matter. It's not the memorization. But so what are you saying in your words? Maybe in the short term, you're going to get your, your revenge, but in the long run, you'll lose everything. So you're taking a long range point of view. You're in a sense telling him that you have to think of the long range consequences of this. Yes. I try more appealing. That's that there's a side of him that you know about, which has been uh, has shriveled up because of what others have done to him. Yeah. 
And because he suffers from an excess of pride, I think he oh, yeah. always has. And he'll never listen to his mother. I mean, I, well, she's, I, she's a bit peevish, I, actually, in this. Uh, How do you know? Well, because she says there's no man in the world more bound to his mother. But that happens in the, in the course of the thing. Yeah. Doesn't mean she starts out that way. No, no. Why don't you just let it happen? Thou knowest, great son, the end of war is uncertain. But this certain, that if thou conquer Rome, the benefits which thou shalt thereby reap is such a name whose repetition will be dogged with curses, whose chronicle thus writ. The man was noble, but with his last attempt he wiped it out destroyed his country, and his name remains to the ensuing age abhorred. Okay, let's just work on that section. Let's go back. Uh, so, uh, what, what are some of the words that, that are in interesting to you? Thou knowest, great son, the end of wars on the certain. But this certain that if thou conquer Rome, the benefit which thou thereby reap is such a name that will be dogged with curses, whose chronicle thus writ. The man was noble, but in his last attempt he wiped it out, destroyed his country. Okay, getting better? Think so. Yes. First part of it could have been. Uh, okay. Well, we're back. Well, here we are. Yes. <laughs> um, so, describe uh, for us uh, a little bit of uh, what went on and, and what you what, what it was that you were coaching June yeah, to uh, do. Probably the interesting part of it was, was the black when it went black. Uh, <laughs> came up again. I thought but you'd the, say the, that. The, 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 how to get the actor involved? When I was talking about that vulnerability earlier. You know, where do you come into this? There is no volumnia unless the actor participates. So all the just words on a page. And the process here is trying to get June to involve her more. And that's done by, uh, you know, a, a, a concrete relationship to many of the uh, um, phrases, the words of the text, like great son, right. which was something that was brought out in this, you know. That's a way of getting to him, you know, in, in terms of his accomplishments, in terms of the, the uh, um, what's still possible. So though the, then the appeal is not, the, is not a head product, it, it's actually happening. It's coming from you, and the attention is outside you on the object. And in a sense, she, she knows what she wants to do, but she's letting that, him as the object lead her. Right. The object uh, for, if we were to create some sort of a definition, uh, the object of attention. Right. Yes. Very, that simple. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, uh, as we're, uh, we, we tended to, we, we've already, as I anticipated, r been running a little long, and we have some, uh, we've uh, set up a space here in the SCAT studio so that okay. you could uh, uh, further coach uh, some, some other students, and, uh, and we, uh, I had to make a decision in editing that tape, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I, what I wanted to show was what was beginning to happen with June's performance, yes. uh, and that you were getting into then asking her some questions. What words jumped out, and then there was a, a, about a good 10 minutes extra of discussion about that thing that, yeah. th that then culminated in the performance that we saw at the end of the tape. Right. And what I wanted to show was the well, effect. We'll try to compress it here. So yes, we take it the effect time. of the questioning. Yeah. So we, we can probably uh, stretch out and see that a little better here live, since okay. we have some, some live performers for you to work with. Very good. Uh, we have in the studio with us today uh, Arthur Comenio and Sarah Ford. Uh, Arthur will be performing first, or rather working with Ted. These, uh, bear in mind that these actors, uh, June Lewin included, who you, whom you saw on the tape, 
are, are working. So on this program, you're not seeing finished performance. You're seeing actors uh, working on getting at uh, being able to portray the characters they're doing. So in a, in a sense, it's kind of a, a nice and an inside look that you might not otherwise get uh, on, on acting, the craft of, of learning acting. So uh, we have set up in our studio uh, another set where we have, uh, we will allow some playing and we'll allow to, uh, uh, we'll, you to look in as uh, Ted works with uh, our, both of our actors and then uh, both our actors will work on a scene together um, after they've done one individually. So uh, let's, uh, let's uh, let Arthur uh, do his scene then. If you want, wait one moment, Arthur, we'll make sure that, uh... okay. Hi. I want to do a monologue from a play called Where's My Money by John Patrick Shanley. Uh, just to give you a brief background, I'm a lawyer. I'm talking to a good friend and giving him advice on whether he should get a divorce or not. And basically, um, kind of advising him to, uh, it's okay to cheat on his wife. So. Right. You poor bastard, they have you by the balls. Right or wrong, that's the corral they use to keep the cows out of the house. A man like you should know better. A man who came from the depths. Henry, we're lawyers. We do not traffic in right and wrong. Come on, that's, that's for chumps. That's for clients. Okay, Arthur, yeah. that's fine. Let, let, let's... Later on, you talk about how you uh, lifted yourself out of this trap, right. right? We won't go into that part of it now. Do you think that affects what you're doing at the beginning? Um, you mean where I wound up and is that going to Yeah, Yeah, that, that, that must have been a fairly traumatic experience. Yeah, I, I go on to relate a traumatic experience that I had. Yes. Yeah, right. So, so and I, I, that I, at the moment, I think you you've eliminated that. Uh -huh. Let's go back and see, see what you're for, to for the, to see whether you know how how close you came to falling into the pit. Yeah. From your point of view. Okay. Right. You poor bastard. They they have you by the balls. See, Arthur. Once yeah. again, and if we're going to explore it from on this level, yeah, he's no longer the object of attention. You are. Yeah. Okay. In in in, in a sense, you, you how close you came to uh, 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 dying. Yeah. So why don't you make you the object of attention I rather you. than him? I got you. See what's happening. All we're right. exploring it now. Right. Poor bastard, they have you by the balls. Right and wrong, that's, that's the corral they used to so keep the you, cows what, out what of the So what are you house. looking at? What are you seeing? You know, I, I mentioned this to you once before. I, I saw a homeless lady in the Davis Square subway stop, and so I think of her when I do this monologue because I'm going to get to the part later on in this scene where I talk about Can you make lady. that lady you? Uh-huh, okay. That's how close you came. You know, okay, if I'm homeless, I guess, uh, and I've been homeless for a while, I think the outrage is probably passed for a while, I think after a while. Well, let's not work on that part of it. We're yeah. working on the, the point of how, uh, getting you involved more. Okay, okay. Right. You poor bastard, they have you by the balls. Right and wrong. That's the corral they used to keep the cows out of the house. A man like you should know better. A man who came from the depths. Henry, we're lawyers. We do not traffic in right and wrong. Okay, okay, getting better. But I still don't feel that you, uh... Oh, God, they had you. Okay. Hook, line, and sinker. All right. If I had not had this case. Yeah. Right. You poor bastard.
ass that they have you by the balls. Right and wrong, that's the corral they use to keep the cows out of the house. A man like you should know better. A man who came from the depths. Henry, we're lawyers. We do not traffic in right and wrong. Okay. Come on, that's... That's so much better. In terms of using you. Okay. Now you could, you, you could t tackle it from another point of view. Yeah. Less that, that subjective element that, that we're, we're talking about and much more the, the, the confident know-it-all guy. But we're, let's, we're not working it from that angle. Okay. Right now. Yes, this, this sense of how much it means to you. Yeah, I, I felt that right now. Uh, yeah, I wasn't and, feeling that and before. And that, that I think is, uh, you know, you, so it, it, it's, it, it's not just words, words, words. Right. Here, but it's, 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 uh, it comes from a deep part of you. Yes. Yes, if you are talking to him, but in a sense you're talking to you through him. Yes. Okay. You know, and then you, yes, you go on to talk about the, uh, uh, the case you had and how yeah. close you came. And then you saw the, 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 the woman. The homeless woman, yes. The homeless woman, um, which you thought was, that, that's justice yeah. in, this, in this world. Yes. Uh, I saw this homeless woman and I looked at her and I realized uh, people were ignoring her. And I realized that's justice in this world. Yeah. People ignore it. But the very end of the scene, what, what, what do you say at the very end? Of the monologue? Yeah, you talk, there, 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 there's a little passage there that's a, a little obscure. Well, uh, it ends actually, on, a, it ends on give, a strange note. Um, give, the, give the note. Well, uh, the actual words. I basically, I, I tell my friend, you know, after seeing this homeless woman, I, I resolved to never be her. I was going to do what I need to survive, regardless of what anyone's ideas of right or wrong are. And then I go into this section where I talk about um, I'm down at Borough Hall and I see this woman. Read it. Read it. All right. Um, two days later, I was down at Borough Hall for a pre-conference. This clerk was busting my chops, and I went out for the men's room for a breather. When out of the ladies' room comes this, this woman, and although I didn't know her, I recognized her. Like she had an identifying shackle. She had a limp. It was the sexiest thing I'd ever seen. That's, that's fine. What, 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 what comes through for you now? What, what? Um, I think... Because this is obviously, it's metaphor for something. Yes, I think I... Um, the metaphor is uh, I progressed beyond the stage of what's right and wrong, and uh, there's this woman. Well, what's the shackle? The shackle, um, I think this woman had a certain amount of vulnerability, probably because she did have a limp. And I was going to go after that woman because I felt that there was something about her that I desired tremendously. And I didn't care whether I was married or a lawyer oh, yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Would you? Would Arthur do this? No. No. So then uh, that doesn't make much sense unless you you, you buy it. So I have That's to. A, but I, if, if 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 is it you with the limp? No, it's the uh, it's the woman who has the limp. I know. But you're stuck. Um, I think by the end of the monologue, I'm getting unstuck. I okay, all is. right, but I think it's inter interesting, you yeah, know, without it, jumping to the conclusion, there's no, what, what is really being said there? Yeah. Because I don't think it's clear. Oh, well, no, there's it's not clear at all. There's a great deal of ambiguity about that, yeah. so we, you'd have to explore it more. Yeah, but yeah. I think the, the part we worked on at the beginning is fine. Yeah, That's good. All right, thank you, Ted. Thank, thank you. you. Great. Thank you, Arthur. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, you were working with Arthur to, to, to plug uh, some more of him yes. into it. Getting him, you know, so that what, what's there in, in, is, is something that you know, is filtered through the being of the actor. You know, and his, his, his own experience must get involved in this, in the sense he has to wed himself with what's there. Right. Yeah. Uh, and we, that's what we were trying to do. 
Right, and that's, I mean, there weren't really any, uh, I mean, that was kind of the object lesson in, in what, we were, what we just saw. Right, and uh, in, initially, you, you, you're taking an, uh, a kind of theatrical attack on the thing. Yes, it has a certain kind of validity. Mm -hmm. you know, you're playing at being oh, this, this know-it-all guy, you know, who's been through the mill and now thinks he has all the answers. Right. But you're actually playing the human being now who has been through the mill and is not altogether sure. Yes, he's extricated himself, but uh, uh, there's still the sense, you know, that uh, the pit's still there, which I think has reference to the, the shackle. Yes, yeah, and that was uh, it was quite it was quite an interesting change. Uh, yeah. I really liked what happened. Okay. Uh, so we now also have uh, Sarah Ford with us, mm -hmm. um, who's also going to do some work. Okay, and uh, we'll uh, get a chance to for you to w work with Sarah. <coughs> so uh, let's go uh, watch Sarah work with Ted. Hi. This is a monologue from Quilters. And uh, this is a character called Cassie. My husband and I married back in Virginia, and he wanted to come out west just as soon as he could. He got a job laying track for the first railroad into New Mexico. And when that job was done, he got put to work inspecting 20 miles of track. He walked it. He could do it in a day easy if there wasn't any repair work. I was home caring for the stock and the kids, and I wanted to make something nice for him, so I started on a quilt. It took me two years to finish. I was always hiding it from him when he came in, sometimes running when he hit the door, or stashing it in the craziest places like one time in the stove. Okay, what did you discover this time through? There's some interesting things, but I think there's uh, ah. pull, pulling pieces together. Yeah, I discovered, I think, more the continuity of the first part a little bit. Well, that's a little abstract. In terms of your yeah. husband. Well, I, discover, I, I discovered how exciting it was for me to make this quilt for him. And... Uh, what, what, what was exciting? Oh, just the very fact of when I worked on it, I would think about him and wondering what he was doing, and it would kind of keep me connected to him in a way. Um, and also... What, um, is the, what does the line, he walked it, mean to you, 20 miles? Oh, he walked it. Well, that's... Uh, he walked it. He. He was on his feet, and he was inspecting every single inch of that track. And he was doing a great job. If you would pull together that and more, like all those words add up to, this was a remarkable guy. I was really proud of him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So then it would lead into the quilt. But that I, I would wanted to make something special for him. Ah. Okay. Right? Yeah. So the, 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 the tie would be there. Exactly. But I wanted it to be something very special. Right. So I, I didn't want him to see the thing until it was completely finished. Right. So he could see it all at once. Yes, but by that it. time, you've, in, in a sense, you, you've created the husband. Right. And that's the object that you need to concentrate on uh, at the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Let's try again. Yeah. My husband and I married back in Virginia, and he wanted to go out west just as soon as he could. He got a job laying track for the first railroad into New Mexico. Okay. I, I think, Sarah, let's take try another tack. Starting it with something like, I want you to know about my husband. Mm, okay. You want to know about me? You'll know more about me if you know how I felt about my husband. About him. Okay. Yes. My husband and I married back in Virginia, and he wanted to go out west but, just as soon as he excuse could. Excuse me. 
I'm sorry for breaking in, but what would you want to do at the beginning of any passage? Oh, I want to make contact with who I'm talking to. In, with words? No, also by looking at this person and by this person, I've, I've also decided, is someone who's been through a similar experience that I have, and yes. I'm trying to comfort that and let her know. That may be, but wouldn't you yeah. want that person to become interested oh, yeah. in what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, absolutely. So that's where, you, so you're too much ah, inside you. Okay, all right. You're worrying too much about the, 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 your uh, relaxation. Mm -hmm. Let that come through the... Uh, uh, Making the the other the person the object of attention. Ah, okay. So just concentrate on that. I want you to know, and you can put mm. your words into this. Don't be afraid of doing that. I want to tell you a story. My husband and I married back in Virginia, and he wanted to come out west just as soon as he could. He got a job laying track for the first railroad into New Mexico. And when that job was done, he got put to work inspecting 20 miles of track. He walked it. While I was home, caring for the stock and the That's kids. That's much better at the beginning. Can you tell me what it means to you? He, he got a job laying track? Right. For the first railroad into New Mexico. Which the was first railroad? In the very first railroad out into New Mexico, which was complete, you what know, What did you think of that? I thought he was a hero, and I, I was a little well, worried about What would you think him. of somebody who got a job laying track? Ah, huh. I thought it was going to be hard work. Very, very hard work. and, and um, oh, Much harder work than he's ever been accustomed to? Absolutely, because before he was working in I'm not getting office. that. Ah. That was much better at the beginning. I'll keep that, keep that same. Mm -hmm. And I keep the sense, I want you to know about this guy. My husband and I married back in Virginia, and he wanted to come out west just as soon as he could. He got a job, land track, for the first railroad into New Mexico. And when that job was done, he got put to work inspecting 20 miles of track. He walked it. He could do it in a day easy if there wasn't any repair work. And I was home caring for the stock and the kids, and. I wanted to make something nice for him, so I started on this quilt that took me two years to finish. Better? Much better. Yes. Yeah. Much it's more, more outside you. And I don't get yeah. the faces. Sarah so making faces in this, <laughs> which is part of that sense of uh, you, know, you really haven't found the focus for you. Right. So even within the, the you know, that, that, that business of the track now makes so much more sense. Mm. To me. Mm -hmm. The kind of job that The kind was, of job he had. And, the, and uh, he was willing to do it. A guy who came, he came from Virginia. It. Right. Who had a they very had different long kind of job. He track in Virginia. Right. Yeah, he had a yeah. very different job. Yeah, Dif yeah. very different kind of mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that distress. Now, uh, um, and I would take the time to let that sink in. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do something. And, and, and let that thinking happen. What could I do as you're talking? Okay. Instead of knowing already uh -huh. that I wanted to make the quilt. Letting that happen as well. Right, right. Because you must have gone through several different possibilities, right? Oh, yeah. Until you finally decided. But I decided that this was, it, it was also for practical reasons, but I thought then I could really draw him a picture of yeah. what I, I was congratulating him, of right completing his, you know, his dream. Okay, so let's pick it up from the point where uh, I wanted to do whatever that... Oh, I wanted to make something nice? I wanted to make something nice for him. And, and, and mm -hmm. you know, the tension off the person, and, and like you're thinking back, uh, like you're putting yourself back there. Hmm. I wanted to make something nice for him. So I started on this quilt. It took me two years to finish. Where's the quilt? I was always hiding it from him. Sometimes running when he hit the door or stashing it in the craziest yes. places like 
<laughs> See, but once again, Sarah, what I think you're missing there is that sense of it reenacting. Mm. He's at the door. Ah, I hear him. What do I do? How do I get? What do I do with the with, with, with the quilt? That is letting it happen again. Oh, oh, so that so I, you're collaborating in that sense with the word. Ah, and so it's happening right there. Yes, yes, it's not. Yeah, just as you did with the uh, exactly. in, in building the image of the uh, of the husband. Right. Now you're going to taking it a step further. Now I'm going to do, uh, right. do something for him in the quilt. But exactly. I, I wanted to make something nice for him. So, I started on this quilt. Took me two years to finish. <laughs> I was always hiding it from him when he came in. Sometimes running when he hit the door or stashing it in the craziest places like one time at the stove. Well, when it was done. Okay, getting better? Oh, yeah. yeah. Feels more yeah, in place. Yeah, you, Feels you're more finding focused. ways of, work, of allowing you to come through. Right. Yes. And be more aware of, you know, when you're, uh, damn, I'm working for effect mm -hmm. now, instead of allowing the thing to happen. Right. Then, when you, you've got to that stage, then you can begin to shape it mm -hmm. a good deal more. Mm -hmm. you know, but I wouldn't do the shaping before I've got my, Okay. The, the, the actual experience yeah, so going it, on, yeah. it, It's happening for you, and right. you feel you're participating, and it's, there's yeah. a, 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 um, a naturalness mm -hmm. about the whole thing, but it's based on what's there. Absolutely, yeah. Okay? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Um, we're, going to, uh, we're going to have one more scene, uh, but just to briefly uh, talk about that one. Um, you, you talked about listening to yourself uh, and saying, well, if I'm doing, if I, if I hear myself doing, doing something I know, uh, that's not it, I need to explore yeah. more. Um, how might, uh, if, if you're working on your own, uh, would you, would you, I think you'd have to, you'd be, for certain you'd be working, saying it out loud and you'd catch yourself doing these, saying, well, I haven't quite got it. If, 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 if you've worked enough at this, you, you build up a, a, a sense of truth in yourself. And that, it's like a fuse. It kicks in when something is, is overloaded. It's not working right. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it, it's a device which tells you, uh, come on, kid. Who are you kidding? Right. It's not working. Right? And the, the part of that is built into the mechanism. You know, and if it's an unclear object of attention, I don't really know what, exactly what that is. And that's what's muddying the waters, so to speak. Well, then I have to clarify that part of the thing. Right. So you might then uh, uh, say, I have to stop and, and explore further things that I'm not. Like, like if I, it, it, what is it that I gathered? That is, what it, when, when I was exploring the thing, when Sarah was exploring the thing, right, uh, and, and uh, that sense of what what was happening to me, what would seem to be the thing that needed to come forward, that wanted to come forward. Oh, the husband. That's who I'm really talking about. In a sense, creating the portrait of this man. Because I need. That's my way of introducing the quilt. Right, but not in this in this particular case. Not li like you are simply uh, presenting. Not that you're trying to act out uh, no, the not. husband per se. No, you're, no. It's through it's from through you. Right, you create the husband. Right, who he is, I don't know. And Doesn't that matter. Rings true, that rings it? true. The more it comes yeah, through you, the more it comes through. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, we do. Uh, we have in, in mind a third, yet a third, uh, yet a third. Uh, okay. uh, another session, uh, acting session, and we have Arthur and Sarah together doing a scene. Okay. And uh, so let's uh, let's watch that. Uh, this is from a play called Doubt by John Patrick Shanley. Uh, Sarah is going to play a, a sister, and I'm going to play a priest. Uh, and the sister has suspicions about the priest possibly abusing one of the uh, children in the school uh, whose name is Donald. 
and this happened, this scene is happening near the end of the play, uh, and she's just finished speaking to the boy's mother. May I come in? We would require a third party. What was Donald's mother doing here? We were having a chat. About what? A third party is truly required, Father. Oh, can I ask a question, Arthur? Do yeah. you really think you have a, uh, a focus of attention at the beginning? Uh, do I have a focus of attention? Um, I guess not. Uh, <laughs> Aren't you concerned more about uh, uh, how you feel? Well, at this, this man is, is wrought up. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Uh, he thinks he, uh, uh, an outrage has been committed. Yes. Um, she believes. But where is your attention? Well, my attention is on her. Would you do, just do that? May I come in? What, why, what, without any stress on the words. Don't make it sarcastic. Don't mock it. Just ask it, but with that internal note. Okay. Uh, I just want to say that I, I'm just walking in. This is not a prearranged meeting. That's I'm fine. just walking in. Yeah. May I come in? We would require a third party. What was Donald's mother doing here? We were having a chat. About what? A third party is truly required, Father. No, sister. No third party. Okay, Arthur, that up? Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. You're not <laughs> playing at the thing. I got you, I was playing at the- Talk. Uh, well, okay. The, Sarah. Yeah. Yes. What do you see when you see him? I see someone that I, uh, I am very upset with and I want to get right. him out. Those are words. Right. What, I see as far as you're concerned, what has threat. this man done? I see him a threat. A threat? A threat, um, a, a something, uh, a very bad influence, and I want him out, like a blot. But how do you personalize that? How do you make that um, more yours? Well, I see him as something that, like, like a disease, or something that, that is going to get to me in some way. From the top, please. Now take the time, just as you did, Arthur. May I come in? We would require a third party. What was Donald's mother doing here? We were having a chat. About what? Stay with him. A third party is truly required, Father. No, sister. No third party. You and me are due for a talk. You have to stop this campaign against me. You can stop it at any time. How? Okay. Better, Sarah? Much. Yes. That's, yeah. Once again, you're not playing at something. Mm -hmm. You want to build the, uh, uh, the attitude at the beginning? Yes, right. both of you would have to strengthen that, that thing. You right. know, it's life and death for both of them. It is. And yeah. this. Yeah. Where does the beat end? Without explaining what the beat is for a moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That first beat. Uh, I think. You and uh, me are due for a talk. Yeah, you and me are due for a talk. I think that's the end of the. That's the end of the beat, beat I believe. Just before the line, you have to stop this campaign yes. against me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It comes in. So we start again. Just from that, from the end of the first beat. No, sister. No third party. You and me are due for a talk. You have to stop this campaign against me. You can stop it at any time. No. How? Arthur. Yeah? That transition there, what happens? After you know it's going to be done my way. Yeah, Isn't I... Isn't that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm uh, exercising my authority over her and um, so what are you saying when you say you have to stop this campaign against me? Um, I think there's a lot in there, actually. Uh, she's personally attacking me, and I, I'm what? innocent. Yeah, what is the campaign? She's trying to accuse me of having molested this boy, and, well, 
whether okay. I'm guilty or not is right. part of the now, we'll problem of the play. Right. What would bring you to the, it, would it be a valid question to ask yourself, why would I come now? Yeah, uh, I think that's a very valid question. Um, I, I've gotten, I believe I've gotten some word from some other people in the church about how, how uh, the sister is trying to ruin my reputation. And I'm concerned about my reputation. I'm concerned I, about I, yes, I understand. Did you realize it had gone this far? Um, when I heard that she had actually called in the boy's mother, uh, that was the thing that got me so incensed that I decided to march into her What, what do you mean incensed? Well, how could she be doing this? She's supposed to go through the official channels. But how do you person? how does Arthur make this real? She, I, well, she's going behind my back. She should be going to me or the pastor, and instead she's trying to accumulate bad things about me behind I know, back. but they were, for, for me, they, they sound like words, 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 Arthur. But of a much more of a sense of the threat now is real. I never realized it, it was that close. Yeah, well, that's true, now too. It's my, yeah. Now it's now right it's there. Right in front of you. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. She's um, gone for the jugular. Yeah, I think prior to this, uh, oh, there was insinuations, and okay. I thought so I could handle it. Can you it, pick it up now with that, that, that moment of... Uh, 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 you, you've picked up the sword, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So take it from the end of this beat? You might stop this campaign, yeah. Now take your time, just to, uh, focus on, on, on her and you know that the, the, the threat is real. You have to stop this campaign against me. You can stop it at any time. How? Confess and resign. You are attempting to destroy my reputation. But the result of this is going to be your removal, not mine. Okay, once again, Arthur, now what are you saying in your words? Uh, you can do everything you want, but it's Could you true. summarize the thing? I don't, lots of words don't yeah, help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's the one that's going to suffer, not me. Would you? You're the one that's going to suffer. It's going to be your removal, Would you repeat not that? Mine. Repeat it. What you just said, not the text. Okay. The result of all this is going to be your removal, not mine. You're going to pay for this, not me. Pick it up. What are you doing in the school? I am no, no, the line, the beginning of that beat. Oh, okay. The same way, do it again and then go into the beat. You are attempting to destroy my reputation. But the result of, those, of all this is going to be your removal, not mine. What are you no, doing? No, no, let him pick it up with that line. The beginning of that, excuse me for getting excited, oh, the beginning yeah, of the yeah, beat. Yeah, yeah, oh. Uh, campaign. You have to stop this campaign against me. You can stop it at no, any time. No, I want you to go through it again, please, Arthur. Okay. Oh. Now, wait, wait, where are we starting? He's going to pick it up from that line, campaign. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But he's okay. using his words at the beginning. Oh, okay. Yeah. You have to stop this campaign against me. You can stop it at any time. How? Confess and resign. You know, Arthur, the factor of resistance. You are attempting to destroy no, my Arthur, reputation. Arthur, if you really, you, can I get up? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if, you, if, if you would sit on that, not let it happen, you, God, I could kill you. and then hold it back. Okay. Even on a line like how. But the how doesn't mean like, like I'm lost. The how means what, what tactic have you got up your sleeve now? Yeah, how, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. You miserable, I won't say the words. <laughs> <laughs> no, <good. laughs> well, this is a very visceral scene, so. Yes, so where are we starting? Same point. You have to stop this campaign against me. You can stop it at any time. How? Confess and resign. You are attempting to destroy my reputation. The result of all this is going to be your removal, not mine.
What are you doing in the school? I am trying to do good. Or even more to the point, what are you doing in the priesthood? You are single-handedly holding this school and this parish back. From what? Progressive education okay, so and a welcoming what, church. Hey, what are you discovering? Uh, much better, by the way, at the beginning. Yeah, you? thank you. Um, I'm, uh, what did you get from her when you said you'll be destroyed? Yeah, um, I'm getting the sense that this woman is determined. No, no. What, what, what did you get from her? That's listening. Okay. We're going to have to wrap it up. Oh, okay. See, I much more the sense she's now engaging you. Yes. That's, so certainly. That's the victory you have at this moment. Yes, I got. You didn't use that. Yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. She was fully involved, and I yes, was fully and she, involved. She comes at you. Yeah. Like you, you. Yeah. Exactly. And I uh, so take advantage of that. Sword, that's yeah. that. That's the adjustment that will lead into that. that the bit about. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that was what was beginning to happen right then and there. Oh, well, that's what you're interested in. Yeah. Thank you, Ted. Okay. Well, thank Ted, you. that was great, and uh, you know I think we've run to the end of our time. I'd, I'd like right. to thank you for appearing no, on the program. No, it was uh, really uh, great to if the, if the act have a chance to share learn this. Something, with uh, I learned something. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, and thank you, thank Sarah, and thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, crew. Yeah. We'd also be like to be sure to uh, thank uh, the Screen Actors Guild and Actors yeah. Equity for uh, giving us permission for uh, Arthur and Sarah and June and Ted to appear. And uh, I'm very grateful for their assistance. So uh, thank you for watching Dead Air Live this week, and, uh, and hopefully you'll tune in again in two weeks when we'll have a completely new show for you. And uh, unfortunately, we won't, uh, we won't have Ted with us, but no, that's uh, right. I'll perhaps hopefully I'll, I'll still perhaps, be around, though. <laughs> perhaps I'll make a visit. <laughs>